Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. It's really good to have you with us wherever you may be watching from. We pray that this is not a time of watching but a time of belonging and a time of sharing and all that God has to offer to us and longs to say to us this morning. So this morning Andy will be continuing our series on Christian stewardship through our passage from Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, looking at the area of our lives, which in one way or another will affect us all, and that's relationships. And our young children this morning may have, ha have to hand now their activity sheet produced by, by our children's team. And I know uh, you have a question about what our passage says to you about God. So do fill that out and then perhaps send some comments to Andy and Emily. We always love to hear from you all. So what does the passage say to you about God? Let's uh, put aside a moment for prayer now and uh, we will pray together as we begin our service. Father God, as we come to stop to look and to listen for your presence in our lives and in our homes this morning. We pray that we hear from you, that we are able to praise you and to share with you in prayer. Help us to set aside all that has gone before us this morning and be in your presence alone. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, praise indeed. Uh, do join in word and voice with the choir as they sing, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. We come now to the time in our service where we remind ourselves where we have chosen to go our own way, to turn away from God and to step away from his love and care. And we've just sung those familiar words, ransomed, 
healed, restored, forgiven. And we are going to say the words on screen together in the knowledge that Christ has indeed paid the price for what we bring before him. And we ask for his forgiveness and restoration in our lives. So come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like the morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. We now have uh, some notices to share with you and I hope that you've all received and been able to read our weekly net notices that have been sent out by email. And there's many important dates coming up next week is our harvest services and hopefully weather permitting one of those will be outside for the uh, families and young people. Our APCM coming up and a prayer meeting as well. And uh, next week is our confirmation service led by the Bishop of Tunbridge at St Peter and St Paul's Church. Today we have two new church building services, one at 11 o'clock this morning at St Andrews and the other at four o'clock at St Philip's. Do pr please pray for these. The four o'clock at St Philip's uh, was a ticketed event due to limited space and we have actually, uh, all the tickets are uh, gone for this week. So if you want to book in, do so uh, early ne for next week. And we thank you for all your prayers for the leaders across the parish. They're much appreciated and uh, do serve to encourage uh, the continuation of all the work that's going on. And each uh, of those leaders will be receiving some encouraging words from Mark for all their efforts and work to care and serve God, to care for you and to serve God in the way that they have been called to do so. We also thank you very much for all donations made in different ways uh, that contribute to the work of our parish. Uh, they are invaluable, they are needed, and we thank you for the time that you give as well. That's another way of donating to the work of God across our parish. And at the beginning of the service, you may have seen a slide, which you can obviously go back to later if you want to find out different ways that you can give in that way. So let's pray for all that we have received and then I'll invite you to share with me in the words on the screen. Father, we thank you for all your good gifts given to us. We thank you for uh, helping us to serve in different ways that we may continue your work and work with you here on earth. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. And we say together, for all things come from you and out of your own do we give you. Amen. We now have a couple of interviews. One of those is with PCSO James Bilson, who's going to tell us a little bit, a bit about his work. He is our PCSO across uh, Tunbridge, and some of you may recognise him already. And that, that will be followed by Emily, who's going to share some exciting news with you. So over to James. It's lovely to have James with us here at St Saviour's. And uh, James is our PCSO for the area. James, tell us a little bit about your role. Um, so, Wendy, my name is obviously uh, James Bilson. I'm your local police community support officer. My role is basically to be in the area, provide a visible presence for Kent Police, and deal with local issues, as it were. It could be anything, any social behaviour, neighbour disputes, that sort of thing. And I wonder how this has changed for you during lockdown? 
uh, the nature of the job has certainly changed. Um, different kinds of jobs, we're still busy and we still manage to keep ourselves occupied, um, but the nature of the call outs has changed somewhat. But there's still the old jobs that are still going on, but with additional jobs for COVID. So it's great to have you here at one of our time to chat last week and uh, as we want to build relationships across the community together it was lovely to have you here uh, are there other any other events that you come along to like that um, so any sort of social event i'll be looking to run will be called surgeries where i'll be available to local residents local parishioners um, for basically they can come talk to me if they have any questions or anything like that I generally run them in other areas as well, so I work up in Hildenborough, so I'm in touch with the Hildenborough Parish Council and, other, and the uh, Baptist Church down in Tunbridge as well. Lovely. And of course we're all doing our best to stay, stay safe at this time. Have you got any advice that you'd like to give us? At the moment the advice would be to follow the government guidelines with regards to, as of uh, Monday, the six person rule in social gatherings. Always remember to have your mask with you if you're going shopping or anything like that. My advice would be to limit social interaction as much as you can. It's understandably very difficult for a lot of people. Uh, we're not blind to that. But basically follow the government guidelines and keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And James, as you go uh, about your work and you and your colleagues at this time, how can we as a parish pray for you? My advice would obviously be to pray for all emergency services. Currently it is quite a challenging time for everyone, not just emergency services and pray, you know, you can reach out to people. People will always be willing to listen to you. So my advice would be pray for, pray for ourselves and pray for your local communities. Thanks, James. We certainly will be. Take care. God Thank bless. you for having me. Hi everyone, I'm coming to you from back in my office, finally, um, and I thought I would just catch you guys up on what we've been doing in Refresh recently. So many of you will have done the Alpha course before, some of you are doing it right now or are involved in it, and we are doing the same but Youth Alpha for our group at Refresh. Um, and if you're familiar with it, you'll know that it's a course where you get to ask the big questions and talk about the big concepts in being a Christian. So on Sunday we looked at life, is this it? And in the future we'll be looking at how to pray and why did Jesus die? Who is Jesus? Um, and does God heal today? Big, big things to think about and discuss. Um, and one of the biggest discussion points from uh, Sunday session was uh, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? And we had a lots of different uh, questions from around the group. We had questions about why suffering exists, um, about what God would like us to do with the world and what he thinks of the world at the moment. Um, but my question was, uh, I'd want to know what is God's name for me and in the Bible it tells us that God has a name for each of us that is given to us by him so I want to know what that was because I think uh, our names can often play a big part in who we are and our identity and so to have a special name from God I think is really amazing. So I thought you guys might want to take a few moments uh, just to think about what question you would ask God. Would it be about yourself? Would it be about the world? Would it be about the future or the past? And whatever it is, maybe just think about it for a few minutes and when you get the opportunity, maybe when you uh, go home after the service, you can chat to people about it on the way or over lunch. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful discussion time as we did on Sunday and we really appreciate your prayers as we go forward with the course. Thank you. Some great stuff there, some big questions to be asked. And let's pause for a moment and say a prayer for James and his colleagues and also for Emily and the Alpha. Father, we thank you that we come together as community, each with our own gifts and each with our own purpose. We pray for James and all his colleagues working tirelessly to keep us safe. Uh, we pray that you keep them safe, that you guide them and that you lead them. And for Emily and for Andy, for the youth team, for all of those who are gathering on Alpha, and we pray for those big questions, that they are freed from their mouths, that they're able to ask and communicate with one another and with you in a really special, deep way. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before we have our Bible reading in a moment from Matthew 25, uh, God's word uh, coming to us and being read to us. We're going to sing the words of the song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. And as we do, let us share in this time to invite God to speak to us through his holy word. So be still. from Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 30. Again it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gave five bags more. So also the one with the two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold bought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. So here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on the deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to one 
who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. It's great to be able to speak with you today. Uh, So let us first just open in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you provide us with. And I ask that you'll provide us with understanding minds that we may learn and be encouraged by your word. Our reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel. Now, Matthew donates two chapters, that's chapter 24 and chapter 25, to the subject of Jesus' return. And in these chapters, Jesus tells us two main parables about his return. The first parable, the parable of the ten virgins, is about Jesus' followers being ready for his return. And the second parable, our subject this morning is the parable of the talents, also known as the bags of gold. This parable goes a step further. It's about not only being ready for Jesus' return in a passive and waiting way, but also being prepared for his return in an active and working way. It's the story of the master who's going on a journey and he is entrusting his servants with various portions of the value of his wealth while he's going to be away. It's on the understanding that on his return, they will give an account of their management, of their share, of the amounts that they have been entrusted with. So it's really the story of um, resource, of being provided with a resource and the opportunity of an increase or return on this loan, which has been provided by the master. Now, this money is sometimes referred to as talents. And it comes from the Greek word talentum, which referred to a significant amount of money. So there is a link between uh, talent as in gifted ability and talent as in monetary terms. The servants were entrusted with the talents of the money. They were not owners, they were stewards. Now we've been looking at the theme of stewardship over the last few weeks. And today we continue to look at this theme but with the context of relationships. So I'm talking about how we are the stewards of our relationships and also that God provides us with the resource, the talents to enhance and nurture these relationships. In order that we can consider relationships from the beginning, Uh, Let's start in Genesis. Let's go back to the book of Genesis. We know that our God is a relational God and he wants to have a relationship with us. That's why he created us. Genesis 1 verse 26 tells us that we are made in God's image. So therefore, we are relational also. We're relational too. Now, when God created the world, we read in chapter one that he was pleased with the creation. In fact, in chapter one, it says six times, it is good or it is very good. However, then as we read on and we reach Genesis chapter two, verse 18, God said that it is not good that a man should not have partner. Therefore, we're told that it is right for us to have relationships with God and it is right for us to have relationships with each other. 
Well, what does this have to do with the parallel of the talents? I, I feel you, you're asking. Well, Jesus, the master, has entrusted us. He has made us stewards of the resource to build relationships with each other. He has provided us with the skills, the gifts, the talents to build and to develop loving Christian relationships with our friends, with our neighbours, in readiness and in preparation for his return. I'm sure if we take a look at our parish community, we will see many, many relevant talents to build relationships with. Talents such as musicians, singers, administrators, IT experts, just to name but a few. And these talents are being put to good use to build relationships within our community, our church community and wider community. But if you're like me, you might be saying, hold on a minute, I don't have these skills or these resources. Well, don't underestimate your talents or your gifts. Don't underestimate what God has given, has provided for you. And let me quote two encouraging scriptures. The first one uh, from Psalm 139, verse 14, which you may be familiar with, and it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Or we could look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, where Paul the Apostle says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Considering these two verses, it's clear that actually we all have the talents, the resource to build and develop relationships for God's purposes. It may take the form of just an encouraging word at an appropriate time or a Christian act at the right moment. But we can rely on the provision of God's resource for us and the opportunity to use it. I don't think that Jesus would have told his followers such a parable as this if he wasn't prepared to back it up by giving us the opportunity and the resource to build relationships. Let me tell you of a, a, a relevant story that happened to me some years ago. Um, some of you may have heard this story, but it's relevant, which is why I'd like to just tell you. Um, I was working for a, a local firm, and in this firm, uh, we had a lot of paperwork going on, and this paperwork had to be filed. Uh, and it's a tough job and uh, a lot of people don't want to do it. So what we did was we, we took somebody on specially and this gentleman was going to come in and do our filing a couple of days a week um, for us. Uh, I was in the office and I was showing him how to do it, what it involved, where to put it, how to stamp it, etc. As I was explaining this to him on his first day, he just stopped for a moment and he said, Andrew, uh, I just need to tell you something. And I looked at him and he smiled and he said, whatever I do, I just have to tell you, whatever I do, I always put God first. As a result of that person taking a risk and having the courage to tell a stranger, me, in a work environment on his first day, that he always put God first. It affected me in a way that I then decided that I would never be shy of my faith at work and I would endeavour to grasp the opportunity to discuss my faith with my colleagues whenever possible. 
Now that's relational. That's a small resource being utilized to build a strong and lasting relationship. So let me encourage you to look for opportunities that God will provide for you to build relationships in order to glorify God. As the Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, we're all parts of the same body. So whether you have the equivalent of 10 talents or just one talent or half a talent, you have the unique God-given opportunity to reach in faith those that do not know God and to encourage in faith those that do. So I'd like to close by coming back to the Gospel of Matthew, this time Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40, where we read the well-known words of the two commandments that Jesus has given us. They are to love the Lord and to love others as we love ourselves. When we steward our God-given relationships and talents to glorify him, to bless others, and we are doing exactly that. So let's close in prayer. Father, thank you that you provide us with the opportunity for relationships with each other. May we learn and may we be encouraged to use all that you provide in order that you may be truly recognised and therefore glorified. Amen. And now Shona will lead us in our prayers. Now we join together in prayer. When I say Lord in your mercy, if you feel comfortable doing so, reply by saying, hear our prayer. Lord God, through the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, we call you our Father and we raise our prayers to you in your limitless wisdom and love. Father, we thank you for the immeasurable blessings you have bestowed upon us and your promise to care for us as we endeavour to live in the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you help us reflect on the lessons of the parable of the talents. In particular, we ask that you guide us to be faithful custodians of our inheritance, from golden coins to golden sun rays, and that we also rightly ask the same of our leaders in the church, the world and our community. We have failed to take care of the natural world which you gave us as our home. For this, we ask your forgiveness and wisdom as we learn the errors of our ways and work to better care for your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you give us strength and humility as we respond to the ongoing pandemic. We ask your forgiveness for where we have selfishly failed to act in the best interests of others. We remember those who are finding the restrictions particularly difficult, including those who are lonely, struggling financially or fearful. We also think of people we know who are facing challenges or embarking on different phases of their lives in ways we couldn't previously have envisaged, from starting school to managing illness or settling into a new community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We reflect on our sins and wrongdoings where we have individually failed to make the most of the inheritance you have given us through our neglect or selfishness. We repent wholeheartedly and ask for your forgiveness and guidance in learning from our errors. In thinking of the blessings you have given us, we remember those who have come before us and those who will come after us as we think of your teaching in Ephesians. Honour your father and mother, this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we share the words we were taught by the Lord Jesus Christ as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Shona, for leading us in prayer. And in a moment, we're going to sing with the choir, Holy, Holy, Holy. But first, we share the words in bold on the screen as we affirm our faith in our one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We say together in faith, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the bride say, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Thank you to all have been, who have been involved in this service this morning, to Andy for your words and to Andy and his team and everyone else who's been involved to make this service possible this morning. Do stay in touch with us throughout the week. We do want to have a relationship with you and to be able to share in life with you. So do share through the parish office or the Facebook. We would just love to hear from you. And if you've joined us for the first time, we look forward to you joining us again very soon. So as we go on into our week with whatever may be lying ahead for you, may I offer a prayer of blessing this morning. Father God, we thank you for feeding us with your living word, for hearing our prayers which we entrust into your hands and for accepting our praise. May you walk with us this week in all that we say and all that we do as we seek to live lives worthy of you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you today and for evermore. Amen. <laughs>